Right, so hey guys, and welcome back to part two of how to create um, a program that shows you how to use MySQL using Python. So as promised, in this tutorial, I'm going to go through the rest of the commands that will pretty much help you use the MySQL library in Python. So in the last tutorial, we got up to being able to display specific columns of um, data from our database. We also did different stuff such as connecting to the actual database, creating um, tables, renaming the table, adding um, data to those tables and so on. So in this tutorial, we're going to go a bit more further into what we can do with more commands. So first off, what I'm going to do is open up Visual Studio Code. And if you guys haven't already watched my previous tutorial or the part one on this, you should go ahead and watch that because this will make a lot more sense if you watch that. Because some of the commands we're going to be doing today are going to be explained more in detail in the last tutorial. So without further ado, let's go on, get on with today's tutorial. I'm going to zoom in a bit here so it's easier for you guys to see. Create a new file, save it as um, using mysql.py. Make sure you don't save it as mysql.py because then it will clash with the actual module that you want to use. So let's save this up. And as I said before, if you haven't watched part one, go ahead and do that. So first off, what I'm going to do is since you guys are watching part two, I'm just going to do what we did in the first tutorial, like the basics. So import mysql.connector um, as mysql. So that's the import done. Then we're going to have a few variables up here. So variables, and then we're going to have host, which equals localhost, because our um, database is going to be hosted on localhost. The user is going to be root, because that's the default user. And the password is going to be empty string, because that's the default password. Cool. Now we're going to go ahead and connect to our database by doing database equals mysql.connect. Um, we're going to use the host equals to host. Then we're going to provide the user, which is going to be equal to the user. Then we're going to provide the password, which is going to be equal to the password that we've already saved as our variables. And then we're also going to be specifying the database we want to connect to which the name of our database that we created last time was called Ford. So before we go any further, I'm going to go ahead and start my uh, PHP MyAdmin service by going here, by going to XAMPP control panel, which we installed in the last tutorial. And I'm going to click on the Apache and the MySQL service so that the MySQL will let us pretty much um, use the database service and let us connect it. So I'm going to click on the admin tab to show you a visual view of what we created in the last tutorial. So as soon as this loads up, we can carry on. <clears throat> Hopefully very soon. Okay, cool. So in the last tutorial, we learned how to connect to this um, PHP MyAdmin interface right here or the MySQL interface. We created this cars database using Python. We then go, went ahead and created a table called Ford in there, which is one of the companies in this car database. And then in that table, we had different columns. So if I open this database, we had ID, name and engine size. We had an auto increment for the ID, which means it will go plus one each time a new record is added. And we were able to manually add these records in there. So this is what we got up to in the last tutorial. So now that I know the name of my database is cars. So I know that So I'm going to go back and I think I accidentally typed in the name of my um, table, which is not what we need. We need the name of the database, which is cars. So database equals cars. You could also save that as a variable, but I'm just going to save time and not do so. So once that's done, we're going to print print connected to database. In the last tutorial, we also did a bit of error handling, but if you like, you can add that. I'm just going to save time by not doing so. So in this tutorial, first command we're going to actually learn would be, um, let's take a look at the list I've got here. So it's going to be displaying one row of data instead of just showing all rows of data that you extract. So when we do a query like um, select star from Ford, this pretty much means that we want all the records. So star means everything. So we are telling the um, SQL database to return all the records that exist in our Ford table. So let's say we only wanted the first item from these this record list. That's what we're going to be doing in this section of the tutorial. So let's make a comment. Displaying one row of data instead of all of it. Cool. So what I want to do first of all is make a print statement right here and say displaying only one row of data. 
and then I'm going to go ahead and also initialize my um, command handler. So I'm going to do up here. Actually, I'm going to go up here and then I'm going to type in command handler equals database dot cursor. So this cursor right here is going to be assigned to my variable called command handler. Now, every time I want to execute a query, I'm going to use the command handler object right here. So I'm going to do command handler dot execute, which is the command to actually execute a query. And then we provide the query in here. So I'm going to go select name form forward. So I've said select specifically just the name from Ford instead of selecting everything. So if I did select star, it would select ID, name and engine size. But I'm specifically saying select only name from Ford. Now this will still return all the names in the Ford table. So I'm going to show you how to um, extract only one record. So create a new variable called record or whatever you like. And then command assign that to command handler dot fetch one. So in the last tutorial, we used fetch all to grab all the... Um, available records that are coming back but in this tutorial we're only going to be using um, ha command handler dot fetch one i'm going to go ahead and print record we don't need a loop because we know that we're fetching just one record so that's fine let's go ahead and run this quickly and see if that works so voila it says connected to the database displaying only one row of data forward focus so it's going to show the most um the first record that was inserted which is forward focus so that's fine that's how you display just one record of data instead of showing everything let's close it off now moving on we're going to learn how to actually filter rows of data that are returned by um, actually adding a condition to it so what do i mean let's find out so filtering um filtering rows of data returned and we are able to pretty much add a condition so i'm going to do print filtering the rows of data returned and then in here we're, once again we're going to have to change the um, query so we're going to have to reassign command handler dot execute to a different query so i'm going to do a query where i type in okay let's get rid of this switch here oops what am i doing cool so i'm gonna what's going on so i'm gonna go here and type in my query so i'm gonna say select star which means select everything from my Ford table, which um, includes the engine size, ID, and name for the different Ford model cars. Select star from Ford, but I'm also going to add a condition where the name equals, and then I use single quotes to mention what name I'm on about, and I'm going to type in the name that I want to be um, re returned. So where the name equals Ford Focus. So now what's going to happen is on it's only going to select the rows of information from my Ford table where the name of the car equals Ford Focus. The rest of the records are going to be excluded. So if the name is Mustang or Ford Fiesta, it's going to be excluded. So I'm going to prove that to you by actually running this and hopefully it works fine. So I'm going to go ahead and create my variable called records. Now I'll call this records now because we're going to be receiving multiple records. So command handler dot fetch all because we want we, are, we know that we're receiving multiple records this time not just one and then we need a loop because we're receiving multiple records so for record and records we're gonna print record cool let's run this and hopefully it will work just fine so quick run and we have an error so what does it say unread result found so this error is happening because of our cursor initialization so what we need to do to resolve this error is this is mainly happening because we we already have some information that's already stored in our fetch variable so if you want to store multiple fields of data in here without it having to complain or mourn about it what you want to do is go up, back up to line 10 we, where we assigned our database.cursor to our command handler and then type in an argument in there called buffer which is going to be equal to true where the capital t now i believe that when i run this it should work just fine let's take a look got an expected unexpected keyword buffer hmm. why did that happen let's take a look so what do i have going here do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. that's weird it shouldn't have done that but let's take a look I'm just going to pull up my notes really quick. Okay, actually, it's not buffer, it's buffered. So I forgot to spell it correctly. 
So it's buffered equals true, which means we're going to be able to buffer um, multiple ports that are returned to us without crashing. So when I run this now, finally it works fine. So as, as you see right here, all the records that we have are forward focus based. So all of them are forward focus. Now just to prove that my database also has different um, models, I'm going to open up my database. And if I show you right here, I also have Mustang, Ford Fiesta. Um, yeah, I have Ford Fiesta and Mustang apart from Ford Focus. But my results are only Ford Focus based because that's my query. I've added a condition in there. So that's how you filter rows of information using a where. So using the where that we used right here. Cool. So now that we know how to do that, let's move on. Um, let's take a look at what we're doing next. Okay, so in this um, in this bit of the tutorial, I showed you guys how to select a select rows of information based on the exact name that's given. So we can also create like a little search function where we um, return results based on similar outcomes to words. So what do I mean by that? Let me show you. So filtering the rows of data based on similarity of words. Now if you use Google before, you may have noticed that they have something called Google Suggest. So before you actually finish typing something, it suggests um, things that you may be looking for. So most of the time they're pretty accurate and that's what this is sort of like. So I'm just going to finish this off. So in here, instead of typing the specific thing that you want um, to be looking for as a criteria, you can enter a couple of keywords. So it will make more sense once I've finished typing it up actually. So let's see, query. <clears throat> so to run a query, we're going to have to open up command handler again and type in execute. And then in there we type in our query. So select star from forward where pretty much everything is the same so far. Name, oops, name. And then now instead of um, equals, we type in like. So we're saying select star, select everything from the forward table where name is like or similar to these keywords right here. We're going to have to use... Um, uh, what's it called percentage signs to format the string so we type in uh, I'm gonna type in let's say mus so this these are the three words three characters or one word that I'm giving my um, query to filter off so anything that has mus in it is going to be what's going to be res uh, what's going to be returned as a result so pretty obviously mustang has a mus in it so this is like when you're using um, a search filter or something like that. You would find this pretty useful because you can use just um, part of the word that you're looking for. So let's go ahead and see if this actually works by um, running this query and then um, finding out the results that are returned. So records once again equals command handler dot fetch or and then for record in records print record. Cool. Let's run this up to see if that actually works. Uh, and as you see right here, filtering data that um, is similar to a keyword provided. So the keyword we provided was MUS, M-U-S. So the most similar results that were re returned was Mustang because the name has M-U-S in it. If we had something else that also had M-U-S in it, it would return the results for that too. But this is working pretty fine. So let's go ahead and look at what we're going to be doing next. So we are going to learn now how to sort data. So we've learned how to filter data. We're going to be looking at how to actually sort data now. So we could learn about how to sort data alphabetically first. So sorting rows of data by name. Cool. So if you wanted to sort the data that we are returning or being returned from our database, based on alphabetic order, so from A to Z, we could do that by using a sort um, query. So first off, I'm going to do a print sorting data based off name. So we're sorting ba data based off the name of the car now. Now we're going to do command handler dot execute select oops select what's going on? star uh, select star from forward and then 
we're going to do order by name. So what this does is we're telling it to sort all the information that's being returned alphabetically by name because name by default has alphabet so it knows that it needs to return it in the alphabetic order. So lastly we're going to do our for loop so record um, records equals command handler dot fetch all and then for record in records print record cool so hopefully that works in the first go and looks like it did we have sorting data based off name and if you look at the alphabetical order it's pretty perfect so f comes before um, m which is fine so it is returning all the data or the results that we have based on alphabetic order so f first so all the forward results come up first for forward fiesta and forward focus and then the mustang comes up cool so we've learned how to sort by um, name alphabetically so next we're going to be learning how to um, sort data by most recently added information because by default the data that's returned is in the order where we are returned the item that was first added to the database not the most recent entry that was made to the database it's the first added um, uh, column of information that's returned instead of the most recent so let's take a look at how we're going to be doing that so we're going to be typing in sorting data in sending order <clears throat> so that's how it works so we're pretty much sorting data in descending order because by default it's in ascending order to show up all the information from the first inserted um, row of information to the very last but we here we're going to be doing the opposite so print sorting data based of id in descending order now we're going to be using an, the id to find out the descending order because id is a number obviously so we're going to pick up the highest number in the id which is possibly or which needs to be um, the most recent um, record of data that was inserted into the database which is what we want so we are going to do command handler.execute and then we're going to be typing in select star form um, forward and then we're going to be doing order by this time we're not ordering by name we're ordering by id because we need a number to go in descending order and we type in descending dsc in caps then lastly we need to do our records thing again so record equals command handler dot fetch all then for record in records print record cool let's run this up to see if it actually works no errors which is a good sign uh, sorting data based off id in descending order so as you see right here um, we have been returned the data based on descending order so it's going to show me ids that were last inserted um, to the id that was first inserted cool so that's working fine as well let's actually confirm that this is correct so let's take a look at the order of information so if i go to my database and refresh <clears throat> Ford Focus was the first one to be inserted, but the most recent one was a Ford Fiesta. So it needs to be Ford Fiesta, then Mustang, and then um, and then it needs to be Ford Focus. So Ford Fiesta, Mustang, Ford Focus. So as you see right here, Ford Fiesta comes up first, then comes Ford Focus, and then Mustang, as I said in here. So it's pretty straightforward. Ford Fiesta was the most recent one, then the most recent after that was Mustang. And the last most recent one was Ford Focus, so it's working just fine, showing us the information based on most recent to the um, last inserted row of information. Cool. So that's how you do that. Um, let's now learn how to do the dangerous bits, which is deleting records and tables. This, these um, commands need to be used very carefully because you might lose a whole load of data that you may have saved in your databases. So make sure that you use these commands pretty carefully. So deleting records, we're going to learn first of all. So we're going to learn how to delete a single record. So print deleting records from a database. Oh wait, actually from a table. Okay, cool. So 
and this is going to be based on a criterion so we're going to do command and low once again dot execute and then in here we're going to provide a query so delete from ford where the name equals mustang now as you may have already guessed it's going to go ahead and look through all my records for my <clears throat> For my forward table and then it's going to find out the records that have the name mustang and any any record that has the name mustang is going to be deleted that's pretty straightforward that's what it's doing right here so we give it a criteria on what it needs to delete so lastly we're going to be typing in um, database.commit to save all the changes and refresh and then lastly we print um, the number of um, the number of rows that were affected so command handler dot row count comma record records deleted cool let's run this up quickly to see if that works and um, hopefully it did yes it says deleting records from a table and it says five records deleted now let's go ahead and refresh our database so this is our database right here let's refresh it to see if mustang is in there so refresh and as you see it has worked fine so the Ford Focus and Ford Fiesta are still here, but the Mustang has disappeared because that's what our query was meant to do. It was meant to delete every record with the name starting with Mustang. Cool. So that's how you do that. Now the next one is going to be even more riskier. This command is going to show you how to delete an entire table. So to do this, I'm going to create a dummy table in here. So I'm going to create a new table. Uh, come on. Okay. A new table. I'm going to call this dummy. And then I'm going to click on go because I don't want to lose the Ford database that we already have going. So let's click on go. Is it done it? Okay. Uh, it doesn't seem like it. So I'm going to call this dummy. Oh, actually, I need to click on save. I'm being dumb. I'm adding columns by accident. So I am the dummy. So let's click on save down here. Missing value in form. What is missing? Okay, let's just type in something like name and let's save that as a vec here. Um, save. Enter a valid length. Okay, Being very picky. So if we did it through command line, we wouldn't really have these issues. But hey, there we go. So we have a dummy database with a, um, I mean, we have a dummy table in our cars database, which has name filled. We're going to be deleting this dummy table now using Python. So let's learn how to do that. So. First of all, let's make a new comment saying deleting an entire table. Cool. So like always, we're going to have to query this. But before that, I'm going to print it out. So command handler dot execute. And then this is pretty simple. We just do drop table and then we type in the name of the table. So I'm not going to type in forward because I don't want to drop my actual table. I want to drop in drop the table called dummy. So once that's done, we are going to print. Um, we're going to print table deleted. Cool. Now we don't need to commit because this is just deleting literally the entire table. So we don't need to ch save any changes. The table will just disappear. So let's run this up, and hopefully we have a message. Okay, it does say table deleted. Let's go ahead and verify if that's true. Let's refresh this page. And as you see right here, if I click on cars database, the dummy, um, the dummy table has disappeared. It's only Ford right now, which is um, correct according to what we've done over here. So let's close this off. And what I'm going to do now is actually comment these two out because they might otherwise error. So control KC, save, because it might look for the database now called um, dummy, but obviously it's already been dropped, so it's not going to be there. So you don't want any errors, so I've commented that out. Now, what is the next command? Let's take a look. Do, 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 do. So, okay, so we also have a command that's literally made for what I just spoke about. So we delete a table if it only exists. So deleting a table only if it exists. So this comes with an error handle in it already. So print deleting a table if it exists. So if it exists, it will delete. Otherwise, it won't do anything about it. So command handler dot execute and then we type in drop table um, if exists so that's the um, condition we are giving it 
and then we're going to type in dummy obviously it's not going to drop the table because dummy doesn't exist but it won't error out either which is a good thing about it print done cool we're going to run this and we shouldn't see any errors because obviously it says done but it's not done because it's I mean it is done it's checked whether we have a dummy table we don't and so it's not done anything about it but if we did have a dummy table it would have deleted it cool so that's how that's done um, now the last or the second last thing actually that we're gonna learn is how to update records in a table now let's say let's go back to the database let's say you had um, this table Ford right and you had um, Ford focus and all of a sudden due to the pandemic or whatever all the Ford Focus 1.8 litre cars have to be changed instantly to 3 litre cars. Obviously it's a bit unrealistic but hey, let's say you need to do that. So you, if you went to edit each one of these using the GUI, that's jarring very long. There's actually a query that you can use for this. So that's what we're going to be doing. So let's make a new comment up here and let's call this updating existing reports in a table. So we're going to print the same, updating oops, existing reports in a table, table, and then what we need to do is write up the query for it. So we're going to do command, command, and let uh, execute, and then the query is going to be update, because we're updating, update with caps, then we type in the name of the table, update table forward and then set the engine size because we said we wanted to change the engine size equals two and then use speech um, I mean single quotes and then type in I would say we're set changing it to three liters from uh, 1.8 so type in three liters and then we need to do where so we need to say where we want to change it where engine size equals 1.8 um, and name equals was it Ford Fiesta? Let's take a look. And name equals Ford Focus actually. So let's grab that. Actually, I can type that in. It needs to be exactly the same. The Ford Focus. Okay, and let's actually run that once we've printed it out. So print um, record updated. Cool, let's run this and if we go down here it says records updated nice let's go into our database and see if that actually worked refresh um well clearly that hasn't worked let's take a look at why two let's try and get rid of and name equals and type in this one in here because i think it's the and sign and not the and word. Let's take a look. I can't remember the exact syntax for this. Okay, that hasn't worked either. Ford focus, have I spelled it right? Ford focus, I have. But let's try using a comma. Run it now. Okay, we have an error this time. What's the error? Name equals. Okay, so I'm not sure how to actually use the right syntax for this, so I'm going to get rid of the name. Well, actually, let's just do it like this and we'll see if it actually works. So let's run it. Okay, still have an error. So I'm going to get rid of this, where name equals Ford Focus. Let's save that up. So we're going to be changing every engine size that equals 1.8 to 3 liters. So let's run this. And then if I go back here and refresh, uh, hmm. That's weird. Still hasn't changed. Okay, I see. So this is a stupid mistake on my behalf. So I'm gonna press Control Z a couple of times. So the and was actually working the whole time. So we will stick to our query where engine size equals 1.8. There we wanna change our, the engine size to three liters and name also needs to be Ford Focus. But the thing we were forgetting to do is actually commit this. This is the important bit about commits. You actually don't see any changes until you commit the change. So let's run this up now and hopefully it doesn't error. Okay, it doesn't error. Let's go back and check. Okay, it still hasn't worked. Let's refresh. All right. Hmm. 
let's try and get rid of the and name equals board focus because maybe that is wrong after all. Run it now. Okay, refresh. This is for you. That is super weird. Let's take a look. Update Ford. Set engine size to 3 liters where engine size equals 1.8. Um, and then we are doing a commit. Hmm. Should have worked. Command handler dot execute. Hmm. Why has that not worked? Let's run this again. Set engine size equals three liters. Where engine size equals one point eight. Okay, and then we're committing it down here. Is it actually called database DB? Okay, it is. Let's run this and go back. And let's actually hard refresh this. So, Control F5. Okay, still hasn't changed. So, I'm not sure actually what I'm doing wrong here. So, if you guys can correct me in the comments, that would be great. Um, it did work when I was experimenting with it earlier so i'm not sure why exactly this is happening i'm going to try one last time so we're going to actually store this query in a different variable so we're going to type in update ford set engine oops engine size equals to let's go with two liters this time and then where engine size equals 1 point, oops, 1 point, come on, 1.8. Okay, that's the query done. And then we just execute the query that we pass in here. So let's get rid of this and type in query in there. Okay, and that's good. And then we are also doing the commit down here, which is fine. Let's run this. Okay, what does it say? It says records updated. I'm not sure if it has though. Ford focus. Hmm. That's super weird because it this actually needs to have needs needs to have worked. I'm not sure why it's not working. But anyway, if you guys could um sort it out, that would be amazing. So let's move on to the last bit of this tutorial, which is actually limiting the records to a specified number of results. So if you want to um, receive only a specified number of results, this is how you do it limiting the records to a specified number of results so print limiting how many results are returned then we do command handler that executes select and start from Board, and then we add a limit of three records to be returned so we're only wanting to return three records so records will be equals to command handler dot fetch all and then for let's go next line for record in records print record cool so let's print this out now and has it worked okay it has so limiting how many results are shown and we have only three records for the query that we wrote um that's about it cool so that's fine i'm still pretty bummed about why this um editing didn't work so why we weren't actually able to edit out information from our database are we actually looking at the correct information let's see Gonna try closing this and opening it in Chrome or something because sometimes it can actually use just cached information. Localhost PHP my admin. Let's try this. Cars Ford. Okay, it's let's see what the edit query would look like. Edit. Mm, what if I wanted to edit this? So if I typed in 1.8 type in two instead zoom in a bit and then let's go so right here it does say what the query actually is so it says update forward set engine size equals two 
where id where forward dot id equals one so it's pretty similar to the um the query we had going so it was update forward set engine size equals two liters okay where engine size was equal to 1.8 liter oh i see my mistake oh my god i missed out the l guys i'm so sorry i took the biggest l from this so it needs to be exact the same so 1.8 liters and we can use the actual and now name equals ford was it ford what was it i'm so sorry guys it's such a silly mistake so name equals ford um focus so let's go in here and type in forward focus and let's actually run this query so hopefully this will work this time around let's refresh and oh my god finally it feels amazing to see this working so it was a silly mistake on my behalf i forget i forgot to put an uh, l in the 1.8 which means it wouldn't match any records that already existed so now if you see it's gone ahead and matched pretty much all the engine sizes that had 1.8 liter and had the name of ford focus and it's replaced it with 2 liters so 2 l so that's about it for today's tutorial guys i'm sorry for extending it to such a long time but i'm pretty sure that you've learned about a lot more commands in mysql and that you can use these in future projects if you guys have any new ideas for the channel please make sure to drop them under the community tab under the post that i have which is um, ideas for new videos if you guys would like to donate to the channel directly, you can do so by either becoming a patron on my Patreon account, which is linked in the description as well as on my channel tag, or you can buy a super chat emoji or a highlighted message when this video premieres. I'm not forcing anyone to do so, but if you'd like to, that would be amazing. Also guys, thank you for all the support you have been showing, I am very grateful for it. If you would like to follow my socials and Discord as well, it would be pretty nice. Um, and that's it. I'll see your beautiful faces in the next tutorial. Peace.